This is the Game Time Guru Podcast, where I interview sports figures from all over the world to help deliver a panoramic view on sports. So whether you're a former athlete, one of the crazies, or simply a casual sports fan, this is the perfect show for you as we peel back the curtains and learn from our guests every single week. I'm your host, Shane Larson, and I'm helping you see sports through a different lens. What's up, everybody? Welcome out to another episode of the Game Time Guru Podcast. My name is Shane Larson, host of the show. Six years we are going into this show, 179 countries at the time of this recording, and all 50 states in the U.S. Thanks in large part to everybody who has tuned in, uh, has been part of this show, whether it's a guest or if it's a listener. And I want to tell you guys the same thing right now. If you guys are new to the show, if this is your first time listening to this, first time seeing the show, maybe you came across it in just a, a Google search, or maybe you know the guest on our show, Welcome aboard. I'm glad to have you here. I just ask you guys to uh, hit that hit that subscribe button. Uh, hit the subscribe button. You can check out all the different content that we have on the show, different interviews I've done over the last six years. Uh, a wide variety of guests have been on the show and shared their insight with us. So feel free to hit that subscribe button. And if you're uh, feeling up to it, leave me a review on Apple Podcasts, guys. It would uh, definitely help me out. It helps the show get out to uh, more and more and more people. That's how we've gotten it to 179 countries organically. So joining me today on this podcast, which is being brought to you by Nation's Best NIL Athletes. Um, as you guys know, the Game Time Guru Podcast and uh, Nation's Best have partnered together, and we're, we're doing some shows together. And this is an episode that's being presented by them. I'm going to leave their link here in the description. But joining me on this podcast today is Donnell Britt. And we're going to be talking about the the Diamond League that he has going on. It's a, it's it's We're going to learn all about it, okay? Because he has the whole thing set up. But it's Diamond Sports Group. It's youth football. Um, and just youth athletics, but we're going to learn about the diamond sports group from Don Elbert. What got him into this? How did he get started with it and what they all do? So, um, Donnell, first, I just want to say thanks for joining the show and uh, being willing to share your story with us. Oh man. I appreciate for y'all having me on today, man. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely, man. Um, it's an honor to have you with us and, and talking about this, but let's, let's talk about diamond sports group, Don, Donnell, and, and see kind of where like this all originated. How long has this been? in existence and i guess my other question would be like what is it can you tell the audience what is the diamond sports group yeah man uh we're, we're about nine years in uh um in march it'll be 10 years uh that that we've been in business and uh this uh december uh will be our actually next week right after christmas would be the ninth annual uh, all-american game that we're putting on you know diamond sports group kind of started man as, as a, just a combat company uh, we used to go around the country and do combines for kids um, and high school athletes. And, um, you know, at that point of, of my life, I was still in the military. I was still in the Army. And uh, so, you know, I, I knew that – and I was in Minnesota out of all places. When you think about youth football or even football in general, uh, other than the University of Minnesota, you don't really think that there's any football players that really can play and, and ball out in, in those areas. And um, at that time, I was kind of working for a company – uh, I had just stopped working for a company, uh, All American Games, and uh, so I, I was familiar with the youth football scene and the high school scene. But we were doing a combine, man, in New New Hampshire, out of all places. Again, you know, I went to places yeah. where nobody really cares about if the kid can play or not, and I wanted to be in those locations um, because I believe that um, we as people only care about most of the time the top ten percent like yeah. top 10% athlete, but I believe that the world is made up of the 90 percenters and is and the league and all that stuff is made up of guys who probably were more 90% than 10%. You know what I'm saying? And so when you round it all off, that's just my belief. Whether that's true or not, I don't have scientific information. But I was in New Hampshire, and uh, when I was in New Hampshire, man, I started to notice that it was some kids that I felt like could compete on a national level. And uh, so when me and my staff came back from the combine, we always do an after-action review. And uh, we started talking about how can we put all these kids together and do it at a high level. And uh, we reached out to Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. Shout out to, to the people down in Myrtle Beach, man. And, and they said they had a spot open um, um, for uh, a weekend for us to come down there and put on the All-American game. And that's where it all started, man. We started doing the All-American game nine years ago in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. And we haven't looked back since. Wow. That's that's awesome. I love the fact that you guys, you know, are you're out there finding the 90 percenters. 
you know, I live in Idaho, Donnell. So like I'm on the other side of the country and I always talk about this. I have a goal with all, all my other media businesses too, that we're trying to uncover our hidden gems out here. We feel like there's a lot of hidden gems that aren't seen because they might not just be the top prospects out of California, Texas, Florida, uh -huh. Alabama, like all those types of schools, you know, like those are those types of states where the athletes are, you know, born and bred, but like, we do have some really good talent that comes out of Idaho. And so I'm a, I'm a big believer in trying to find those hidden gems, trying to find, you know, the people that are there and giving them a platform and an opportunity to kind of showcase themselves. So I think it's really cool. The whole idea of having a combine is, is pretty cool. I want to know like, so what ages, so you mentioned youth and high school, but what ages like, does it range from when you say youth, how, how young are these kids that are able to do these combines? Yeah. So we, 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 we don't, go more about the age we are we're about a grade and then the reason why my game is about a grade is because i want them to see the kid that they're going to compete against eventually in high school you know what i'm saying so a lot of times people just want to do the eight you nine you ten you but i i changed it and, and went by grade when i started and uh, so we started third grade but we actually let exceptional second graders play on the third grade level um and we've had a, a lot of them over the last years but so, you know, you go second and third grade, and then we go all the way up to we have a ninth grade game. And so that's where we kind of stop. And that's where our 707, we have a 707 that we partner with uh, the Longhorns out of uh, Alabama, and they're called the Savage Longhorns now. And, um, you know, so once we once the kids are done with, with coming to our All-American games, they kind of get funneled into our 707 program so that we can kind of watch them and help them and assist them on recruiting. You know what I'm saying? So I wanted to ask you, Donnell, about this event you guys have coming up in regards to it's on the 27th through the 31st for, you know, Diamond Sports Group for the ninth graders. It looks like I saw a flyer of it. Um, could you tell us a little bit about that and what's going on there? Because we'll have this episode launched prior to that. So for those who are listening between the date this launches, which is Friday, the 23rd and the 27th, I would like to get the information out there. So talk to us about this event that's going on at Myrtle Beach. Yeah, so um, this is our ninth annual uh, Diamond All-American, what we call Bowl Week, uh, what we call the biggest uh, event um, that we do um, around the country. And that is actually, for me, the biggest collection of youth talent um, that you'll, you'll ever come to. And uh, we do a lot of great things. Uh, the, the kids come down and they get custom uh, book bags, gloves, socks, uh, headgear, uh, you name it, we give it out to them uh, when they come through. And it's kind of like treating that kid very, very special. Because whether they come to the event one time or, you know, start at third grade and age out in the ninth grade, we want to make sure that they're treated special. So when they go back to Idaho or wherever, you know, they know that, you know, they may not never have a chance. Something simple as playing on turf fields, right? Some kids will never play on a turf field in their life. But when they come to, you know, Myrtle Beach, they'll play on a turf field. But uh, we bring those guys in. Uh, we probably got about 25 to 30 kids per team uh, from third grade to eighth grade. And then we have our ninth grade uh, uh, D1 Savage freshman um, All-Americans. Um, and so we did the freshmen um, because we wanted to kind of help them jumpstart some recruiting um, and, and get them some film against some kids that um, are from another place and, and just as good as they are. And so when you talk about the senior part, I mean, the ninth grade part, uh, we're doing a showcase, we're doing a combine, we're doing some recruit seminars. Uh, we're doing a lot of things to, to get them to understand where they need to go from here uh, when they get back home. Uh, for the third and eighth graders, it's all about exposure. And it ain't necessarily exposure to a college. You know what I'm saying? It's exposure to, you know, like, man, when I took my son to a game, you know, well, before I was even doing this stuff, uh, <laughs> I found out I thought my son was the best running back in Ohio. You know, we was I was stationed in Ohio at that point. And uh, what I found out was he wasn't. You no, know, it was kids that were bigger. It was kids that were faster, it was kids that were stronger. And it motivated us when we went home to get a trainer and get better. You know what I'm saying? And so it's, it's about that. And then, you know, we do award ceremonies. Um, I give out laptop computers. I do uh, – uh, player of the years, uh, scholars of the years. And I give all those guys laptop computers. Uh, we do coaches of the year, team managers of the year. It's a big, fun event for your family, um, but it's a competitive football week. Uh, all kids play two games uh, when they come down there. So they practice for a couple of days. They play the first game. And then, you know, hey, you got to tweak some stuff, right? So we let them have another practice day so that they can learn about reading film. You know what I'm saying? So the coaches – take the film and they they sit down with the kids and go over time introduction 
to film study or, or, or correcting something that went wrong in another game, and then they play another game the next day on New Year's Eve. Aha. This is interesting, man. And I think it's awesome for the youth. This is a similar concept to, like, club basketball for me. What, what you were saying here, Donnell, was like, you know, these kids get this opportunity to kind of sit like your son, you know. You, you, you're you really good, but then you get to go see where you match up with, with other kids your age, that, that age group. And, you know, some parents might be like, oh, well, they should still be having fun with it. But, yeah, <clears throat> but when you start getting older – and if you're taking it seriously and you really want to get get better, it is nice to see what the talent level is out there. It kind of is an eye opener for a lot of people. I know that is the fact here in Idaho. You know, a lot of kids, whether they're basketball players or football players, they have the same kind of, I would call it a come to Jesus moment where they're like, oh boy. Okay, so California basketball players are a little bit more athletic on the wing than maybe that of Idaho, right? Because you're not right. used to seeing a 6'7 wing in Idaho. You're used to seeing 6'7 posts in Idaho. And so it's a little different situation. So I love that you guys are giving these guys opportunities to like come there together um, and, 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 you know, basically put it all out there and see where they're from. I want to know, so it's at Myrtle beach, but where do you guys typically get guys from? Do you have people coming from the West coast at all? Or is it mainly on the East side of the States that you have athletes coming from? Absolutely. Uh, we, we pull, I think this year we pull from about 40, 45 or 46 States. Um, so we, we pull from all over California. I got a kid from Idaho, Iowa, um, I, I wish I, I wish I knew you from Idaho. I would have pulled the kid's name before we got up here. <laughs> That's um, all good. But Iowa, uh, you know, New Mexico, uh, all the way up north, north, northern, you know, New Hampshire, all that stuff like that, down to the Floridas, you know, the Texas guys, uh, of course, Virginia and North Carolina, very heavy because I'm from Virginia and uh, our vice president, I mean, our president of Diamond, uh, Larry Kennedy, is from North Carolina. So, you know, because we're polarizing figures in our state. So, of course, we get a lot of kids from our area. Um, and then my vice president, she's from Maryland. Um, but we got kids from all over, man. And that's, I'm telling you, it's, it's, it's truly a melting pot of families. And and that's what happens, right? So when they come to the event, you know, they sit around and they they, they get used to each other and, and they trade information. And it's about, you know, who can be your ally in the future. You know, a lot of times when you see these kids get to high school and they go to a camp, they link up with each other, you know what I'm saying? And we become a big family of people, the network. We call it our diamond network, man, of people who can help you, whether it's not necessarily always about football. Yeah, football is the, the catalyst and, 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 the, and the springboard of all of this, but who can help you get a job in the future? Who has an internship? You know, what what parent that you meet? Man, we, we got parents that have, have moved other families to their areas for better schools, you know what I'm saying? We have had guys hire people and move the family to, you know, to work for a different company. You've had it all, man. You know what I'm saying? In nine years. So, yeah. Man, that's, that is cool. So it's, it's an opportunity for people to network above, like just along, I should say, along with being able to compete. Right. Yeah. And, and on the athletic side, you're networking, you're making these relationships, which I don't think Donnell, a lot of these kids understand the benefit of that. Even, I mean, you can start networking and the parents themselves can start networking with other people. Like at a very young age, like it's super important in life to network and just build relationships. I, I call them authentic relationships with, mm -hmm. with people. And that gives them an, uh, an avenue to do so, especially because they're like-minded individuals. They have this, this, uh, love of the game of football. And then they can like, you know, network off of that with the other things that are, that are part of their lives. That's pretty, that's pretty awesome. Um, talk ab about this docu series. So when I was talking to Bob from nation's best, he talked about this docu series that's going to be happening for uh, Diamond Sports Group. So, talk to us about that and uh, what the listeners can expect from this docu series that apparently is going to be coming out about you guys. Yeah, so you know, it it was this was a a dream of mine, and it's 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 definitely my baby uh, that I've been uh, trying to get going uh, for the last five or six years. Uh, when I started Diamond Sports Group. You, you start to see a lot of things, right? So, you know, we, we, with everything that's going on in youth football, we, we see a lot of bad, right? We see a lot of, right. you know, but we, but we also see a lot of good. And, and it's the same for the event, right? So I wanted people to kind of see the inside of kind of how we operate, but I wanted them to see the good of the event and the bad of the event. You know, I wanted them to see how, you know, when a kid does something great, you know, the parent is, is, is on their side, but also want to see where a parent might be a little bit, you know, too overzealous at, at times and, and, and could kind of, you know, back back a little bit. So basically I wanted to give everybody a true um, depiction of, of what we do. You know what I'm saying? And so that's so four years ago in uh, Virginia Beach, Virginia, we shot the pilot uh, for, for what we call the Diamond League. Um, 
the Diamond Football League that's, that's going to be aired on Tubi, Fox Affiliates Tubi. Um, and we shot it, and um, the networks went crazy. I mean, they loved it, and uh, we had got picked up um, and was ready to sign contracts with Netflix. And then COVID hit. And so COVID hit, everything ceased. Hollywood said we're not doing anything because, of course, you know, where we're going to film at, that, that they, you know, who's going to take the hit? If somebody dies at the event because of COVID or right. somebody COVID from the event. So things kind of went on the back burner. And I do a, a, a podcast with some gentlemen here in Virginia um, called Talk Kings or whatever. And um, I was talking to a curator about that, trying to get that on a podcast with uh, with, with another network. And because we were on a local TV show, I mean, a local TV channel. And I, I brung up the show and I showed them the um I showed the curator the uh, what it is, the pilot. And again, they all loved it. And I think in one week we went from nothing to having a distribution deal to, you know, everybody wanting the show, but wanting to see the reaction of the people of the show. Um, so we decided to go uh, with the with the deal with Tubi. And um, man, I, I'm excited. Um, it's going to show you some good things. It's going to show you some bad things, but it's truly authentic of who we are. We didn't script anything. Um, I didn't even see all of the footage get put together until four years later. So when I was watching it, I was at, uh, at as well, um, the situation that happened. And uh, I look forward to everybody seeing it and then seeing season two. So, yeah. Awesome, man. So when does this launch so that people can get ready for it? So the funny thing about the funny thing about Tubi, all they can tell you is it's in the can and it's, it's going to drop one of whatever Friday. So if it's not, um, we will know today. What's today? Wednesday. We know today um, by 12 o'clock tonight if it's going to launch Friday or it's, when we came into December, they said it was going to be one of the Fridays in December. So we only got two left. So <laughs> it's going to be this Friday or next Friday, man. And um, again, uh, I, I can't wait till the world can actually see that and kind of understand who we are as people, because, you know, when, when people do these games or when people do all American games and stuff that you see popping up. You know, all of them aren't done by real people that are authentic and real company. And I just wanted people to know that we're a real company. We care about the kids and the families that come to our event, um, just like right now. And even me as the CEO of this company and owning other companies, um, I'm in there right now helping my guys do bags for the kids next week because we want to make sure when the kids get there that everything is streamlined, everything is professional, everything is on time. And I care, you know what I'm saying? A lot of times, you know, I walk around the event and I'm very accessible because whether you got an issue, I want to know and I want to fix it um, as best we can while we're still there. So, yeah. I love that, man. I, I love hearing that. That's so cool. Super cool. And yeah, when this launches, <clears throat> this episode will launch Friday morning. So those who are listening to it right now, you'll know, uh, you know, check it out. We'll see if it's, if it's, if it's coming today or if it's going to be another week or so. Cause yeah, this is a, uh, we're right there. So suspense, suspense right there. We're, we're, we're going to wait and see when that, that launches, but I'm looking forward to watching it. That's, that's really cool. You guys had that opportunity. Now, Donnell, I want to ask you this question. You've been around these kids, you've been around parents um, and you've seen kind of like from all walks of life, uh, you know, they're from all across the country, different, different walks of life. If you could give anybody advice, like based on what you've seen on the athletic world to compete at the high level as youth athletes, like they're, they're younger athletes and they're competing at a very high level what does it take to get to that level? What advice would you give to kids that are listening to this? Cause I've got a lot of listeners of my show who are either parents or they're younger athletes themselves. Yeah. So for the, for the parent, please don't live through the kid. Right. I, I think sometimes we, we want to be, we want to finish off what we may have, you know, started when we were older or the mother may want to, to look at this as a man, if my son makes it to the, NFL, X, Y, and Z, we're going to make a lot of money. I, I, would, I would stop there and just say, first of all, make sure that we're cultivating the passion and the love from the kid, right? Because if the kid doesn't love it, right, and he doesn't have the passion for it, eventually he's not going to give it his all. It's going to be a day that he doesn't want to wake up. It's going to be a day that he does, does not want to do this ever again and overworked and overpushed. And I see it every time we have a game kids are great at home they get there and the bright lights come on and i tell the parents the first day i always say listen don't get the kid in the car because he he might have fumbled the ball in the first practice of the of the week and 
and yell at him and go crazy because um, he's nervous. You know, it's the first time he's ever around kids that are just as good as he is. You know, and a lot of times on the youth level, you get by on because you're the fastest kid or you get by because you may be the biggest kid, you know. And so one day you're going to meet the same kid that's just as big or just as fast. And I believe the thing that, that separates you is technique and then knowledge of the game. Right. And so continue to work on the technical parts of football, just like, you know, reading arithmetic. Right. You So you got to continue to work on the small things to make sure that uh, when he gets in a situation that he needs to take the take, it, it goes from God given to technical. Then, it, it you know, he can get through that. You know, sometimes a kid just lives off God given until, you know, now it's God given versus God given. Most technical guy most times wins. You know what I'm saying? When there's a one-on-one matchup. And, and for the kid, you know, please make sure that this is something you want. If, if you want it on a high level, you know, and, and, and prepare now. You can prepare now for then. You don't have to do it as much, but, you know, you can prepare now, prepare now by training. You know, having a trainer. Going to a local trainer in your area, um, a local training gym that has a guy that specializes in certain positions. And I think the last thing is, man, don't pigeonhole your kid in one position. I see it all the time. Well, my son, he's only a running back. Well, what if he doesn't grow enough to be, you know what I'm saying? Or he's only a quarterback. Well, what if he gets to high school and is is a senior and a junior that's better than him? And he can't he he can't be a quarterback into his senior year. But he plays nothing else. He doesn't play defense, nothing else like that. But so I always try to get them to understand that you should have multiple positions. I know one kid um, that's in the University of, uh, of Virginia right now, Dakota Twitty. When I first met him, I think he was a third grader. His dad said, oh, man, he's the best running back in North Carolina. And he, and he was. He was a big kid. His dad is 6'6 six, six or something like that. And I said, well, but he's probably going to be a wide receiver. Well, guess what he ended up as? He's a tight end at the University of Virginia. <laughs> so, you know, but, but at that point, the dad, he laughed about it. Don't get me wrong. He wasn't mad. But every parent doesn't want to hear that, right? Every right. parent doesn't want to hear the truth about their kid. And, and, and the truth sometimes is just a observation, right? Because we don't know how the kid from third grade, right? And that, that's why it kills me, right? So I'm going to tell you one thing about us, what we're not going to do is rank a kid, right? We'll tell you if he's one of the best kids we've seen. And then that's why our, our event in January came about because that's where we, where we put kids we believe are the best kids that we've seen. But we're not going to rank a kid because how can I rank uh, Junior, your son, um, but I haven't seen every youth football kid in the country. That's impossible. Right. You know what I'm saying? High school <clears throat> rank come by um, guys going to big time camps and and a, and a network of guys, and you, they still miss. Think about the guys that they still miss on, right? They, totally. they who don't don't get the proper rating because they get, they didn't go to the proper camp to get rated by these guys who are writing. At the end of the day, they're writers. You know what I'm saying? And they're writing their observation and their critique on your son, you know, and then eventually they get the film and then they go by, you know, the college coaches or whatever. And then you end up three, four, five star. But why are we ranking youth football players? I, I, I haven't figured that out yet. You know what I'm saying? But I, people will probably say, well, why are you having all American games for youth football players? Because I think both can coexist, but for me personally, I won't be ranking anybody. It totally makes sense. <clears throat> and I appreciate you sharing that too, because you see it a lot out there. Uh, there's a lot of, rankings that have a lot of context that's missing and um especially at the youth level so that's that's interesting right there too man um donnell tell us about your your uh apparel company you're wearing it right now i want to know about this i want to know about the apparel company first off and how somebody like myself or anybody who's listening can cop some of this because we want to we want to <laughs> see how we can rep it too but talk to us about that and does that go along with uh diamond sports group at all or how, how does the, the apparel company work, coexist, I guess, with the, the Diamond Sports Group? Uh, it, it goes with Diamond to the point where um, the uniforms that the kid make, the wear, the uniforms that the kids wear are D1 Savage uniforms. I was sick. Um, yeah, D1 Savage uh, started in 2018. And it just ripped, when I first started, it was just a t shirt company. You know, we were just, you know, we just had the logo, t shirts. Excuse me excuse me, t-shirts, hats or whatever. But it started in 2018. Um, and, but, but first of all, savage actually means, right. So savage means scholarships, academics, victorious, um, ambitious. 
uh, goal oriented and educated. And we believe that all people, you know, in, in life should go by some of those principles and, and live by some of those acronyms. And we believe that all kids and, and even a, a parent, you know, at work, are you a savage? You know what I'm saying? So that's how it became a, a lifestyle brand. And now we make uh, uniforms for youth and high school and amateur, I mean, uh, and pro, uh, not pro, but yeah, pro-am uh, sports. Uh, we, we have a lot of hats out there. We got a lot of jogging sets out there. So we do a lot. Um, so we have evolved since 2018, but uh, we're definitely an apparel company. Um, you know, we're similar to your Under Armour and, and Nike. We just don't have the, the big backing of, of that yet. Um, but yeah, yeah. So, we, you know, at the end of the day, we do a lot of youth football and basketball and baseball uniforms for teams all around the country, man. And it's a great shout out to all the teams that, that wore D1 Savage uniforms this year. Uh, we appreciate you and we look forward to a, a great 2023. So, yeah. So if a, uh, if a, uh a coach or somebody who hears this is interested in like checking it out the, you know, possibilities for having uniforms from you guys. Uh, where do they go? Is there a website we can go to? Yeah, you can go to the website. We're, we're, we're redoing the website now. So the best way to, to catch us is either on Instagram, D1 Savage uniforms or uh, on Facebook, D1 Savage um, apparel and, and, you know, or they can email us um, at sales at stitch it.us and that's s t i t u s i mean s t i t c h dot us i mean i t yeah but you you know stitch it dot us so um or they can hit me up you know donnell brit dot dot one or, or on instagram um but we're out there we're not hard to find definitely on, on social media um it's it's pretty easy and, and just send a message we always have somebody monitoring you know our inboxes and and that's how we get stuff started and uh, we do we do mock-ups and stuff for you so you can see it before. And, and our prices are probably the best reasonable prices around. I, I hear that all the time. Oh, oh, man, why is it so low? And because when I started the company, I really didn't start it to make a bunch of money. I wanted to service some of the leagues and teams that I knew, a, a lot of the people that I knew. And I wanted them to service them with a great product, you know, at the end of the day. And I just fell in love with it, man. And, and so... Uh, we haven't raised our price, and and we're very reasonable, and you know we look forward to any new you know customers that that want a uniform. Heck yeah, man! I love that. I'll put that here in the description of the podcast as well. So if you guys are listening to this, you'll be able to check it out. If you're watching it on YouTube, I'll also have it in the description so you guys can go and check it out. If you guys are interested in uh, connecting with Donnell and his team uh, for some D1 Savage uniforms and, and apparel, so excited! So Donnell, the last thing I wanted to ask you as we wrap up the interview is we're learning about you know, yourself and then Diamond Sports Group. I never actually got to ask you about your sports background. So you mentioned military. Do you have a sports background as well? Did you compete in football as well? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, play, I played in high school, and, and that, that, that I, I give a great story to the kid because I was the guy that was pretty good in high school, but but also I wanted to be out there in the streets, and I, and I, I didn't want to do the right things. And also I didn't have a father. I didn't have a father at home or a mother. So I didn't really have anybody at home. Um, like a lot of these kids do, and well, a lot of them don't, and so I can I can relate to a lot of that too. And I didn't have, but I didn't even have a mentor that could tell me, "Hey, man, you're supposed to go lift weights." So I, I live by my God-given ability to do youth football in in the beginning of high school. But I didn't, you know, one year I went out for high school, and it was summertime, and you got to go to summer workouts, and I was like, you know what, man, I'd rather go out here and hang with my friends. Yeah. And, uh, you know, and I didn't have my grades. My grades wasn't right. And and so that's why I, street, I always preach to the youth athlete and, and my own kids and uh, um, books over balls, because without the books, you, you ain't going to play ball. You know what I'm saying? Uh, so I, I stress books over ball. And um, so, no, I did not play high level uh, college football. I went straight into the military um, after high school and um, I became a coach um, when I was in the military. I, I coached in a lot of areas that I was at. And that's that's where I kind of cultivated my love for football. And then I had two two young sons uh, that I, I helped coach um, them when they were in youth football as well in middle school. And uh, they both went on to college and played D1 and, and D3 football. And I actually have one in, uh, playing Division One football right now. Um, so, yeah. Wow. Okay. So you've, you've got some experience, though. So my final question for you would be, now that we know that, you know, you mentioned some of the life experiences, what you learned, uh, and and then you changed, you know, into the coaching world. 
What would you say though, Donnell, in your in your football journey as a player, going through the military then, and then as a coach, and now you're running Diamond Sports Group and everything that you've been through, what's the biggest life lesson that football has taught you? Man, uh, never give up. You know, and and, and also, I, I think never give up and 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 how and adversity, how to overcome adversity. Um, it, it really taught you that because, you know, in football or whatever, in, in sports, you can, but you know, you, you, when you're down, you can either stay down or you can get up. And I think that's like that in life, right? You, you have bad day and you can either wake up the next day and continue on with that bad day, or you can, you know, lift yourself up, however you, however it is, you know what I'm saying? Whatever it is, whether it's religious reasons or, you know, religious way or, or just motivation or self-motivation or however you can always get back up the next day. And I, I always say that. And the last part of it is um, I, I learned to to love. Well, that's not even about that, but I was going to tell you what I go by. I, I, I love people where they are right now. Uh, Cause I think a lot of times we, we want people to be what we are or, or come up to the level that we are. We're going to understand. We just got to love the people that we, you know, where they are right now. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, you know, I learned a lot of different things, man. I'd be honest, man. I, I always say football is a microcosm of life. It can teach you a lot about yourself and about others. You know, teamwork, you know what I'm saying? It, I can I can probably go on and on and on with the things that I've learned and I see for football that I continue to use in life. I'm glad you said that I, um, <clears throat> without even being scripted there because, Donnell, the reason I started the show six years ago was to kind of share highlight stories like this but then also share with people and, and just show them naturally how there's parallels between sports and life. Like they're literally like you can learn a lot of life lessons through sports just by hearing stories like your own. Um, and so when you just said it's a microcosm of life, football is like, that's exactly what the show is all about. So uh, I wanted to kind of make sure the listeners heard that because like, that's exactly why I started the show six years ago. Cause I thought I, I hate when people call athletes, dumb jocks. I think it's stupid to call them dumb jocks because they're actually highly intelligent. Um, yeah. and they can utilize what they've learned on, on the, on the field, on the court, on the ice, whatever it may be, uh, whatever sport they're competing in, they can u- utilize a lot of those skill sets in their regular lives if they choose to do so. Um, so I'm just grateful that you shared that. So Donnell, I just want to say, thanks, man. I, I had a great time chatting with you, brother. I, I am looking forward to seeing what happens with this docu series. So I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing when this launches on Friday, we'll see if it's coming out on Friday, if it's coming out next week, we'll see. But um, right. I'm also looking forward to, to just following you. And I, I just wanted to say thank you once again for taking time out of your day to, to chat with me here on the Game Time Guru. Oh, man, I appreciate y'all having me on, man. Yeah, thank you so much. Absolutely, brother. And for all those listening, hopefully you guys enjoyed it as well. So if you did, uh, leave us a review on Apple Podcasts. Like I said, that will help us get that out to more and more people. And follow us. Uh, we'll be coming to you next week with another interview. And uh, we appreciate you all. Stay tuned. Guys, thanks so much for listening to another episode of my show. Now, if you could go and do me a favor, head over to iTunes, give me five stars and leave me a review. It would be greatly appreciated. Thanks, guys. Appreciate your support.